What's up, beat time, my damies? Topcat here, and today I wanted to bring you my broken ass Silk Strike build. This super is tremendously fun and stupidly strong. With this in mind, I wanted maximum uptime with this puppy. Shout out to my man Seize who helped me crack this code. This build can go from zero super with zero armor charge to full super in just 15 seconds. Now this build will not require you to use the bad juju. Every season we see this vid pop up. I myself have made it. This build will give you more flexibility with your weapons which is required when we start getting into our end game. So make sure to stick around till the end of the video as I break this monster down. Chuck a like down if you're enjoying the video. First I want to take a look at the Super Silk Strike. In short, it has it all. With its two attacks, it is extremely versatile. With a stupidly large circular attack that is not shy on hit points, it will destroy any and all foe in sight. But for bosses, you can target that dart directly at them for a staggering 825k super damage, making this currently the highest damaging super in the game. But its maneuverability is also second to none, as it will give us access to our grapple whilst our super is active so we can attack across challenging terrains. So this build ends with a super, but it begins with the grapple. Our Aspect Widow Silk not only grants us a second charge, but more importantly will create a grapple tangle free from grenade charge. Our grapple grenade has what is known as a grapple punch, where we melee out of your rope swing for a very potent punch. Bungie has made this strong to make up for the loss of our grenade damage. Now we are going to be swinging around an awful lot with this build and as we are not utilizing the Ceterachne's facade for easy woven mail we will be using Thread of Warding. This is going to grant us woven mail whenever we pick up an orb of power. But I've heard through some sources it's a 60% resistance buff making it safer whilst you're in the air rather than on the ground. Now comes the beginning of the genius of this build. To make orbs for both our woven mail and to fuel our super we will be double stacking power mods for orbs on grenade kills. And heavy handed will be giving us orb on melee kills. Now we do this because our grapple melee is both a grenade attack and a melee attack. It's going to generate two orbs per kill. This grapple melee doesn't even use a melee charge but it still constitutes a powered melee and is strong enough to kill multiple targets at once to make those orbs just rain down. To fit in all these mods you're going to need to lower the mod cost with the grenades mod in the artifact. Now the grapple melee also works for ashes to assets for bonuses to super gains on grenade kills and heavy handed for bonus to super gains on melee kills. We then throw in the powerhouse exotic the star reader scales and now we are cooking. Its perk feast of light will grant us additional super energy from orbs of power we pick up. And by now you've seen the amount of orbs we've been pumping out with our grapple melee. So by combining the Star Eater scales with the ashes to assets and the hands on those 15 second super gens never seemed so easy. But it goes further picking up orbs whilst we have our super overcharge our feast of light to max of 4 stacks. This dramatically increases our damage output and will be required to get us to that 825k damage value. Now this build requires grapple at its very core so double stacking innovation for grenade energy on all pickups will go a long way. Also threat of generation, dealing damage from any source will generate grenade energy. But the biggest tip I can give you is you just gotta pick up those orbs. Seeking Wells is gone now so in order to get the juice you'll actually have to chase them down. Luckily for us the despawn rate of these orbs seems to have been raised. I'm also partial to Demolitionist, not only will activating your grapple reload your weapon, but it'll also feed that ever important grenade charge. Ensnaring Slam will be our source of unstop for this build which frees up our weapon options. Pair this with Threat of Mind, defeating suspended targets grants class ability energy. You'll only need to kill a handful to have your class ability straight back, and thanks to this loot we can take full advantage of Bomber. Now I'm currently triple stacking this, but when the installation mod is once again back, I'll replace one of these for that. Now so this build can still flow when your fist isn't an option, I'm running a siphon mod. Obviously use whatever affinity matches your weapon of choice. If you're running multiple affinities, go with the weapon with the best ammo economy. Shadow Orbs is an absolute must this season. This should be a permanent unlock regardless of what build you're running. 
I've been using the hard light as it's got an affinity change on it so I can break shields for that shield break orb regardless of its affinity. But I'm going to main it in the void because in the artifact we also have volatile flowback. Every time we pick up an orb and this build just pumps them out, our void weapons have volatile rounds for 13 seconds. Couple that with void surge and we'll be pumping out that purple on miners, mages and bosses. It is truly devastating and easy to do in DPS phases. And lastly I'm going to be double stacking a font of durance as this will just help push up your resilience. Anyway my dames that is the build for today. Hit that thumb if you liked and I'll leave a dim in the description below. Comment if you've got any questions or suggestions and until next time, tippy time my dames, what a tie.